Hello friends and welcome back to Dayton Dies. I am not dead quite yet and neither are you, which is something that we should both be grateful for. We are back into it today trying to figure out how to exercise this dog and now this priest. This zombie demon seems to have infected them both from the other dimension. The ride really does just never end around here, which is a good thing, all things considered. I'm sure these boys will get it figured out, so let's see how in today's episode, presumably, and uh, we'll jump right in and see what we've got today. We've seen some weird things on the road. Part 9. Written by user Roseblack2222, narrated by Brandon Dayton. I feel like I should explain our living situation. The property we're currently living on belonged to an old friend of Carl's. What happened to him, I'll get to in a later post. But he managed to make a decent setup out here. It's running off of its own power sources, both hydroelectric and solar. It also has its own private internet server, which is good for me. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel comfortable uploading any of these posts. The only downside is that the nearest store is like two hours away, and we only visit it once we've disguised ourselves. I know that sounds paranoid as hell, but better safe than sorry, honestly. Anyway, we weren't in a good situation at the trailer park, to put it very lightly. You took away my toys, the priest growled at us. It wasn't him talking, it was the creature controlling him. His voice was extremely raspy. You can talk? Carl asked it in a bewildered tone. When I have a human host, and now I'll have three more. Of course, we attempted fleeing, but it caught us with ease. Using Zippy, it pinned Carl and Nick to the ground. Using the priest's body, it caught me by moving extremely fast and grabbing me by the throat. His and Zippy's mouths opened, indicating that it was about to possess us as well. Life or death situations are funny things. In them, someone usually has three reactions. Fight, flight, or freeze. But I had a different one. Negotiating. I don't know what it was, but in the midst of my fear and panic, I managed to come up with a spur-of-the-moment idea, and I hoped that it would save us. As it was getting ready to strike, I managed to blurt out one word that made it pause. More. What? It loosened its grip so I could talk better. We can get you more. It eyed me closely, as if trying to find some hint of deception. Still, it did seem intrigued by what I had said. How exactly would you manage to do that? It had made Zippy stop with her mouth open just inches from Carl and Nick's faces. Let's just say there are some people after us. We can get them to come here if you agree to let us go. It considered my words. Would you be able to get more people here than there were before? Possibly. How long will it take? Would 24 hours work? It won't. I'm really hungry right now. I can do six hours at the most. All right, but as a condition of our deal, I also want you to release the dog and the priest. The dog I can do. However, I need this man's body to infect others. I didn't want to leave the priest like that. I didn't really have much of a choice, though. Fine. Do we have a deal, then? Yes! We shook hands on it, and then it released us. My plan was pretty simple. It was for one of us to use their card at a nearby store, thereby enabling our location to be found by those pursuing us, and then lead them to the park. Carl was the one who'd have the highest chance of succeeding, so he went while Nick and I stayed behind. When he vanished from view, we felt the hands of the priests on our shoulders. We couldn't move, no matter how much we tried. We had a deal, I told it. Don't worry, I won't kill you. I just want to have a little fun, it replied, pressing its index fingers to our foreheads. 
Nothing happened at first. And then I felt pressure building in my head. What occurred next is me experiencing the worst migraine that I've ever had. And so did Nick. It felt like my brain was going to pop out of my skull at any moment. Even though I wanted to scream, I physically couldn't. I couldn't even breathe. Something began forming in front of me. A weak light that soon grew blinding filled my vision. When it faded, I found myself to be still in the trailer park, along with Nick. Only, it was nighttime. Again. What the hell is the point of this? Nick asked, looking around. Do you think it's here with us? Before I could answer, someone came outside. An older looking man. He didn't notice us despite staring in our direction. I felt a growing realization the closer he got to us. Does this guy seem familiar to you? I asked Nick. Yeah. Now that you mention it, he kind of looks like the priest. Do you think this is his dad, maybe? Could be, but why would it show us this? The answer to that is something that we could have done without. In one hand, he held a luggage bag. He seemed to be heading towards the park's exit. Not knowing what else to do, we followed him. When he reached the exit, he knelt down, placing the bag on the ground and unzipping it. From it, he pulled out a jar of flour, some black candles, matches, a bag of what I hoped was animal blood, a knife, and a small statue of the creature. Putting two and two together, we realized that we were about to see how it came to be in the trailer park. He poured out the flour, making sure to form it into a mound, and then he placed the statue on it. After that, he surrounded it with candles. Please work, he desperately murmured, lighting the candles. What do you think pushed him to do this? Nick asked, looking at me. Jesus. Huh? Look at his eyes. I didn't notice it before due to how dark it was. Thanks to the candlelight, though, I could see that there were dark circles under his eyes. From the looks of it, he hadn't slept in quite some time. What he did next was pouring the blood from the bag over the statue, causing it to drip onto the flower, coating it. Then he grabbed the knife, raising the blade of it to his palm. I want to make a deal, he said, slicing his hand, allowing blood to flow from the wound and onto the statue. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my hand, and so did Nick, because he screamed as well. We checked our palms and didn't see any visible wounds. That did nothing to ease the dread that we were now feeling from figuring out the torture in store for us. The candle fire began changing, going from orange to red. It wasn't just the color that changed, however, but also the form of the candles themselves. They turned to what can best be described as droplets of blood that despite being liquid, stayed dancing on the wicks as though they were still flames. My god, it's working. His shock quickly turned into regret at what transpired before him. The blood seemed to be seeping into the statue, and then a ripple started forming above it. What emerged from that ripple was the head of the monster. Make my son healthy again and give us the money we need to move far away from here, and live comfortably, the man said to it. In exchange, you'll get everyone else here. In response, the beast grunted, nodding as it did. So, this is how it got here, I commented. He threw everyone else under the bus for himself. Desperation can bring out the worst in people, but why would he come back? Did he not tell him about this? Would you? I mean, not outright. I'd just tell him to like, hey, stay away from this place. And that is what he tried to do. What we witnessed next was him and his son in the living room of another home. The former was seated in a chair and the latter on the floor in front of him. They seemed to be doing well for themselves, indicating that the deal had worked in their favor. Unfortunately, this would not last. What did you want to tell me, Dad? There's a place that you must never go, under any circumstance. Really? How come? What's it called? The name of it is 
His eyes widened. Stabbing pain shot through our chests. Shit, Nick said. Don't tell me. The priest's dad fell over, clutching his chest. Mom! The priest screamed. Our vision faded. Then we found ourselves back in the park. Everything seemed normal until once again the air started rippling. From it came what I'm going to refer to as black steam. It was so dark that it even stood out against the starless night sky. The growl of the creature echoed over the park, causing several residents to exit their homes armed. Judging by their expressions, they didn't realize what they were up against. If they had, there's no way that they would have even thought about going outside when it was around. It's not like hiding made much of a difference, though. This thing was like a cat, in that it just enjoyed hunting. The noises of small children crying came from one of the trailers. Although brief, it nonetheless attracted the monster's attention. All we could do is brace ourselves for what was about to happen. Excruciating does not even begin to describe how it felt. It ripped through the trailer as if it were paper, grabbing the screaming children inside. When it started crunching on them, all we could do was scream. It did the same thing to all of the other residents. We felt all of what the residents did. Being eaten alive, getting their eyes gouged out, torn in half, and having their skulls crushed. In reality, it only lasted a few hours. However, the pain made it feel like an absolute eternity. And then, it just ended. The priest had removed his fingers from our foreheads. We fell back, drenched in sweat from our mental ordeal. What the fuck was that? I asked between heavy gasps. That felt pretty good, it said, ignoring my question. Your friend came through. We raised our heads, detecting the sounds of cars speeding towards the park. Carl came speeding through the entrance with what could be considered a mini army following behind him. Don't move! The priest and Zippy went behind a nearby trailer. Carl came running towards us and got tackled to the ground, and then we were pinned down as well. Put these three in one of the cars, the leading agent ordered. I'll let HQ know that we have them. This is when it struck. The priest and Zippy leaped from atop a trailer, sinking their teeth into two of the agents. Having now possessed them, it proceeded to do the same thing to all of the others. Their efforts to try and stop it or escape were fruitless. Soon they all became a part of it. This turned out way better than I thought. The priest said, I was getting tired of my old toys anyways. We came through with our end of the deal, Carl told it, getting to his feet. Now you have to. Of course, uh, a deal is a deal, after all. <laughs> it made Zippy level her face with the priests. Both of their mouths opened unnaturally wide. From Zippy's came the part of it possessing her, going right into the priest's mouth via projectile vomiting. Ugh. Although disgusting, it strangely isn't the most repulsive thing that I have ever seen. When it was over, Zippy returned back to normal and then fell asleep on the spot. There, now take her and go. I didn't need to be told that twice. However, Carl got an idea. Before we go, uh, could we get their wallets? Carl asked. Sure, it's not as if they'll have any use for them. <laughs> After collecting the wallets, we got the hell out of there. In total, there was a combined amount of over $2,000 in their wallets. Once emptied, we pulled off into a secluded area, then put all of them in a pile, doused it in gasoline, and set them ablaze. With that done, all we had to do now was find Mindy. Luckily, that didn't take too long. We found her in front of the church, about to go in from the looks of it, her mouth fell open when she noticed us with Zippy. I can't believe it. You actually got her back. Yep, Carl said. <laughs> Wasn't easy, though. That is an understatement, I thought, remembering the agonizing pain that Nick and I had gone through. 
how did you do it? It's a long story and we really need to get going. We've already spent way more time here than we should have. Do you have the money? I understand. And yes, I do. You got the money from her car. Well, we can't really say it was a pleasure, but uh, thanks for doing business with us, Carl said to her. Likewise, I'm moving after this. Smart choice. <laughs> we watched her drive off, pulling out of the church parking lot. Do you guys mind if I go take a leak? I asked. They replied that they didn't, and I went inside. When finished, I came back outside, and then we left the church as well. Well, that was all kinds of fucked up, Nick said. Ugh, couldn't agree more with that, I told him. I could still hear that thing's voice ringing in my ears. The only silver lining to all this is that we've got more money now. Speaking of which, reaching into my pockets, I pulled out handfuls of cash and coins. Where'd you get that? Carl asked me. Collection plate. <laughs> really? Nice. How much you got there? I haven't counted it yet, but probably several hundred dollars at least. Words can't describe how happy we were to be done with that job and that town. Merely thinking about what we went through back there makes me want to shudder. Well, that's going to be it for this post. I am going to retire for the night. Stay safe, everyone. Well played, well played. <laughs> it seems like the beast got what he wanted, which isn't ideal, but it also doesn't seem like anything that is able to be actually removed from this plane of existence. You could just stop it for a little while, but eventually it's going to come back, possess somebody else. All it takes is somebody dumb enough to make a deal. And it is really sad that the priest was left there just because of the sins of his father. But I guess that is sometimes how things like this go. Do not light candles. Do not summon creatures into this world. That's a life pro tip. <laughs> it's never going to turn out well. You might get the wealth that you want in the moment. But over the long run, you are definitely going to pay for it. And even your children might end up having to pay for it. Whew. It is heavy, but I'm glad those boys got out of there, got paid. I don't know about stealing money from the collection plate and all that stuff, but needs must, I suppose. <laughs> this money's supposed to go to the poor? Hey, that's me. <laughs> I don't know. Bit of a shady move from Pete, but... Yeah, like I said, you gotta do what you gotta do out here on the road. I hope that you guys enjoyed this story. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around. I definitely appreciate that very much. Uh, join us again tomorrow for another creepypasta video. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Like I said, don't summon demons from another plane of existence. That's, that's just basic. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. And until then, friends, uh, bye bye